let's talk about layout, Rick. So luckily for us, every single house that builders put together are always perfectly square, and there's never, yeah, <laughs> no. especially after 50 years of roots, and now oh, come on, uh-uh. Bones in first. We always build from the lowest grade point up. All our walls, all our features go in first. Yep, and it's crucial to that pavement design. You guys are going to see it's pre-planned half cuts with our Hexa product. If we throw off the layout, it's not going to go in right. That's right. That's the nice thing about geometric shapes. So grading, uh-oh. Humble pie, you see that logo in the upper right hand corner? That means something went wrong. We did not have a good quality grading plan. You see that icon in the upper right hand corner? It means take a picture of the screen. This is a grading schedule or a grading plan and we didn't do it quite right. Now in the upper left hand corner that box is blank. What would go in that box? Uh, we would write what the project is. It's the uh, backyard, patio maybe. or it's the patio, or the walkway, or the Right, so driveway. we may have multiple grading plans on one project, correct? Across the top, we have numbers. What does that mean? Those numbers are going to correspond to all the different pins on the job site. Okay, so grade stakes across that uh, project. So stake number one is typically what? Uh, benchmark. The benchmark, right? Zero, zero. That's our elevation maybe at the threshold of the house. Now the first two, existing conditions, and finished grade. Who gives us that data? Who gives you that data? Huh? Yeah, you. Sales, right? Design. That, they give us that information. And they did. We just didn't double check it. And there were some elevations that were off, meaning we needed more dumpsters than we thought we would. So we always got to double check it. Bottom of excavation and top of base. Rick, who gives us that? The foreman can usually figure that out. They know what the finished grade is. They can double check all the math on site. They know the pavement thickness design. So. And if we find a problem, like we did, right, they can solve it before they get to the point where they need more dumpsters. What's this last one? Uh, that's top of slab. We had a grill island in this project that has to be installed level. The rest of the patio has pitch, so we added a separate line item to put that grill island on. Folks, start using grading schedules, grading plans, Number all your pins on the job site, have a staking schedule. It will actually speed up the job, not slow it down. Now, our dumpsters were off because we had more excavation than we thought. Our location was tough. It was in the front yard. Getting to it meant a problem. So how did we overcome this, Rick? We actually took some time after we started and scheduled out all the drop-offs on our smartphone. So we would come up with little reminders when we needed to call to get a dumpster out or to bring a new one in. So the foreman has an alert that goes off, meaning he's expecting or she's expecting a dumpster to arrive, and they can call to make sure it's on its way, right? Exactly. Now let's drill down on this, because this is important. So we have dumpster delivery Monday the first day in the afternoon. Why in the afternoon? Well, it's in the afternoon because we had to lay out, we had to check all our grades, we had to set our pins, so we didn't really start digging until late morning. Yeah, we don't want it in our way. What happens on Tuesday? Uh, that dumpster goes out, another one comes in, another dumpster comes in, another one goes out. Wednesday? Uh, large dumpster comes in, and then a medium dumpster comes in also. Wait a minute, medium dumpster in the afternoon. Why a medium dumpster? We're starting to get a mixed batch. We've got some cut products, we've got some packaging material, we had a tree that we took down, so it was more mixed material going into that And dumpster. it's there Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, that medium dumpster. Now it's full, what happens on Wednesday? On Wednesday, it goes out. It goes out, and what comes in? Uh, another large dumpster. Well, a small dumpster, right? Why a small dumpster? Well, the small dumpster is for all the different subcontractors on the job site. I, I don't know how, but us as landscapers somehow became responsible for cleaning up everybody's stuff on the job site. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a carpenter, an electrician, a plumber. They just throw it out in the yard, and it is our responsibility. So that's fine. It's outside. That, I get it. So we have a small dumpster to clean all that up. Now, why would we have a large dumpster coming at the end of the job last day? Why? That's to mobilize our equipment. To mobilize our equipment. Now think about it for a second, folks. If we loaded up our excavator, mini excavator, our skid steer, our larger compactors in that dumpster and threw our lock, lock yeah. on it, who would move it? Who would move that dumpster? Yeah, the, the dumpster company. What is, what's the liability to you? Nothing. Say it again, please. It makes me happy. Nothing. The alternative is you move it. You load up your equipment on your trailer. You strap it down. You drive in Philadelphia and New Jersey traffic, which isn't really bad. There's not a lot of traffic around here. That's a, <laughs> All of a sudden, that's funny, huh? Yeah, I get you. There's tons of traffic. So 5 o'clock, you load up your equipment until 5.30. 
5.30 to 6.30, you get to the next job site, you drop your trailer, you unload the equipment, you secure it, and you drive home. Good thing is, it's about 7 o'clock at night. There's no traffic around here at 7 o'clock at night, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Baltimore, yeah, Wilmington, Philadelphia. Yeah, there's traffic all the damn time. Your foreman gets home what time at night? 8 o'clock at night. And what time do we expect them? Let me go back a page. What time do we expect them on the job on Thursday? Yeah, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning again. And we do this 30 times a year. The alternative, way better. Put all your equipment in a dumpster, let them move it, the liability to you is zero. Now, excavation. We did make some mistakes here, right, Rick? How did yeah, we, we rectify did. them? Well, number one, you can go online, look up that model for that piece of equipment, and download a manual on how to run all of its controls and safety features. Okay, who's a foreman here in the audience? Who's a foreman? Who's ever touched a paver? Let's start there. Who's ever touched or seen? <laughs> you a foreman? Okay. Who? Who's a foreman? Okay, you're a foreman. Okay, I like your hat. Black Rifle Coffee. Pretty cool. Good. All right, you're a foreman. Let me ask you a question. The night before the job, you know that equipment that your team isn't real familiar with. They get it. They know how to run, but they're not real familiar with it. Like the JCB Teleskid. Okay. Do you have time to send them all an email with a link that says, here's the information on that piece of equipment so that you can learn to safely and efficiently operate it? Do you have that time? You better say, yes, I'm going to chase you down. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Your number one concern is what? Safety. You love your team, don't you? Okay, let me ask you another question. Do you have time to print it off so you can give them a hard copy the next day? Absolutely, you have time. Continue, Rick. Next. All of these equipment manufacturers like JCB usually create videos on walkthroughs of that equipment. Again, how to run all of its controls and all of its safety. Features. Who's the foreman over here? Who's the foreman? Your foreman. Do you have time to sit everybody around and watch a little? How long is it? Uh, 13 minutes. 13 minute seconds. video. Do you have time to watch a 13 minute video with your team to make sure they can safely and efficiently run that piece of equipment? Yes or no? 13 minutes. The answer is. Yes, absolutely, you have time. We didn't take the time, cost us a little bit of efficiency. You want to be careful. Now, the good thing is here in this local market, Baltimore, Wilmington, Philadelphia, Jersey area, you have nothing but sandy soils, so we can skip through all this section on clay and all that. <laughs> Dean, <laughs> sandy soil everywhere, right? No. Okay, no. Explain this to him, Rick. If you want to learn more about amending clay soil, go to our YouTube page, type in soil amendments, and get videos like this. Base options for SRW, soil grade amendments. The number one reason why retaining walls fail is improper compaction of that soil subgrade. Subgrade amendments, soil analysis, soil stabilization, and aggregate soil contaminants. We call it foundation soils. Foundation soils. If you don't know that phrase, write it down. That's the soil under the fabric, under the base, on a retaining wall. And it's the number one reason for retaining wall failure. We don't properly classify, amend, and compact that soil. You want to learn more about that? It's all on the Techo Block YouTube channel. So, setting grades and compaction. We're good. Okay, so our offset stakes are up. Our string line represents finished grade of pavement. We're running that string line across, barely touching. Our allowable imperfection is plus three quarters minus a half. We're at 15 and a half up there. What are we there? 15 and a half. 15 and a half. Perfect. I see a minus over here. That means I got to take it down less than an inch. I'll use this short rake so I can dig into this sandy soil. I'm always aware of any biodegradables that might be in that area. Make sure I get them out. Okay, can you get that pile out for me, Dan? Okay, that should get me to the proper elevation. I don't want to run my plate compactor up and down imperfections. That's not how they work. I need a good smooth surface to work from. Let me get you a nice pile over here as well. I want to taper that little bit of work I did there out. Okay, I can go fix any imperfections. I see nothing but zeros. Some organics. 
taper that in. I think one more pile, Dan, and we'll be done. This looks ready to go. Thanks, thanks, guys. Getting that excavation wrapped up. Grading and compaction. Always use a grading schedule and a staking plan so you know where your stakes belong. The Sorry. The maximum allowable imperfection in the top of that soil in the top of the base is plus or minus three-eighths of an inch over 10 feet. Any more than that, eventually it will show through on the surface. Okay. Now, I am not a fan of forward-running vibratory plate compactors. Hate them. Only reversible. That's the way to go. And you need to get that in your head. Get rid of your forward running plates. Get small reversible equipment. It'll make you a lot of money. Whether it's reversible or forward running, it sends waves forward or back, not down. So if you have imperfections in that base, all it's doing is sending the waves or the frequency out into the air. You need a good, smooth surface to run your compaction equipment. Now with geotextiles, you want to use the right size rolls. I'm talking four, six, eight, 10, 12 foot rolls, the right size for your project. Now let's take a break here for one second. Dealers in the room, Techo Block authorized dealers in the room. Put your hands up. Tall and proud, where are you? There we go, here we are. Okay, you see them look around the room. Go sit down with them today and say, I buy four, six, eight, 10, 12 foot rolls of non-woven, woven, uni-axial and bi-axial grids. Here's how many I will consume in the entire year. I'll buy them all from you right now. Make me a deal. You make money when you buy things. When you buy things. Make a deal with them now. Have all that stuff in inventory, in your trailers, in your trucks, in your office, and then use it throughout the year. That's how to buy fabrics. Now make sure it extends. That geotextile has to encapsulate that whole excavation and it has to overlap too. This project had sandy soil, so we overlapped it one foot, but in clay soils, it's a minimum of two feet shingled with the flow of water.